This morning, we continued our Shattered Sermon series with Shattered Mind. It's not accurate. We're on Shattered Mind today, but that's okay. Um, it just, we'll just use that as a sermon illustration. Uh, <laughs> shattered Mind. Well, as we continue this, real quick, anybody just shout it out, a fictional character that lives... Uh, with a depressed state of mind. Eeyore, he said, red sure is a cheerful color. Guess I'll have to get used to it. Another one. The Grinch, he said, the Who's are hard to frazzle, Max, but we did our worst, and that's all that matters. Someone else. Oscar the Grouch, this is my favorite. Some people need a shock collar, and I need the remote. <laughs> Love that, man. That's awesome. So I heard somebody else say something. Beast. Who? The beast? Beast. Oh, I don't have a quote from that one, but that sounds like a great one, Maggie. Thank you very much for your care for Disney. Garfield. Garfield. Here's one. Good times are ahead or behind because they sure aren't here. <laughs> Any others? Who? Sadness? I don't even know if I know who sadness is. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's sadness. I'm sorry. I don't have a quote from sadness, but thank you very much. Any, any others? I'll tell you. <laughs> Charlie Brown is another one. I think I'm afraid to be happy because whenever I get too happy, something bad always happens. Grumpy, when she met... the. Snow White? Thank you. I didn't want to get the wrong princess there. Grumpy said, she's a female, and all females is poison. They're full of wicked wiles. That works on Father's Day, not Mother's Day. We know women are not full of wicked wiles. How many of you are familiar with the old show, Hee Haw? Have you heard of that show? Uh, I debated on using one of their songs. It goes like this, gloom, despair, and agony on me. Some of you are laughing. You're like, oh, I remember that song, don't you? Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Could somebody say, praise the Lord? What a great way to start a message. Well, brother and sister, it can get worse. And that worse is found in Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20, if you would like to turn there, Jeremiah chapter 20, we're going to begin with verse 14. Be prepared to be inspired. Cursed be the day on which I was born. The day when my mother bore me, let it not be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought the news to my father. A son is born to you, making him very glad. Let that man be like the cities that the Lord overthrew without pity. Let him hear a cry in the morning and an alarm at noon. Because he did not kill me in the womb, so my mother would have been my grave and her womb forever great. Why did I come out from the womb to see toil and sorrow and spend my day in shame? That's it. If you're waiting for something more inspirational, that's it. The reality is that even in Scripture, we find shattered minds. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. Of, of all the prophets that you might feel sorry for, Jeremiah might just be at the top of the list. You see, God entrusted to him a heavy, heavy responsibility, a, a heavy role in the life of God's kingdom. He was a prophet to the southern kingdom of Judah and, and was entrusted with telling the people that if they didn't get their act together, God was going to be sending Babylon to come and cart them off into exile. But it didn't stop there. 
God said, I don't want you to have children. I don't want you to get married. You are going to live, Jeremiah, a rough, hard life. And I want you to know that. I'm going to put boundaries on your life that may not existed for the other prophets. Jeremiah is the weeping prophet. He was a man that, that the people around him beat him, threw him in prison, tried him for, uh, for violating the state. They thought he was a Babylonian sympathizer. To, to make this into modern terms, it would be like me telling America, if you don't get your act together, America is going to fall, and, and I be accused of being an ISIS sympathizer. That's, that's the equivalent of what it was that the prophet Jeremiah was going through. It was a hard life. And in the Jer- the, the, this book of Jeremiah, we see repeated conversations of the agony that Jeremiah went through with this shattered mind. The reality is that that following Jesus is not a quick fix to the shattered mind. We live in a world that longs for quick fixes. Give me a pill so I can fix it. Go to the doctor and have a procedure so it'll go away. We live in a world of the quick fix. And Jeremiah, in his full obedience, lived a tough life that did not have a quick fix to the shattered mind that he experienced every day. Some of you are very acquainted with the shattered mind. You you enter into the sanctuary this morning knowing the mental turmoil that exists in your life every day. You, You know the ongoing mental battles, you know the ongoing mental defeat, you know the haunting voices and the haunting messages and and the haunting past, and, and you're very much acquainted with that struggle. Now, there are lots of reasons for that struggle. I'm a fan of the intersection of psychology with scriptural paradigms. And one of the ones that uh, is, is very interesting to me that I read about recently is, is how it is that individuals that grew up as children in homes that were not uh, emotionally stable for, for reasons of, uh, of abuse, whether it's physical or psychological abuse, if alcohol was in the home or drugs were in the home, lots of different cause agents, the end result of which... Is, is a, an individual who spent 20 years as a child in a home setting where they would have good days and then disaster. Good days, disaster. Good days, disaster. And this paradigm repeats over and over and over, year after year after year after year. You enter into adulthood having learned how to cope with those disaster situations and you remove yourself from the cause agents of those disasters and your brain has trained itself to live in those paradigms you remove the paradigm what does your brain do it is almost as if the brain psychologist tells us psychologists tell us that the brain will self create disaster to cope with childhood disaster it's very interesting the brain will self defeat will engage in replicated behaviors of our past in order to find emotional stability so that it causes pain and we recover. Causes pain and we recover. 
My brothers and sisters, when I read that, the power of Christ to be able to break the patterns is enormous. But if we don't know what it is that's going on inside of us, it's hard for us to be made aware. Brother and sister, this morning Jesus can break into our life and break some shattered mind patterns in the sanctuary this morning. So what was it that Jeremiah faced? He faced compelling voices to abandon faith. Individuals that live with a shattered mind often live with compelling voices that would cause us to abandon our faith. Jeremiah, man, Jeremiah, what would it be like if you just said, you know what, this whole God thing isn't worth the hassle. These people aren't listening to you. They're not paying attention to you. They don't value your message. They're beating you for crying out loud. They're throwing you in jail for crying out loud. Do you really think that what you're doing mattered? I mean, were they exiled? Yes, they were. They didn't listen. The enemy could have said, you're doing all this for nothing. Forget it. I've learned that those with a shattered mind often face the very real temptation to just say, forget it, it's not worth it. And for those that have the inner stamina to, to resist those temptations will face competing voices to compromise. I didn't read it, but you'll find it in, uh, in the first part of uh, Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah gets thrown in jail, and Pash, uh, Pashbur... Uh, I need, didn't bring my reading glasses here. Uh, Pasher was, uh, uh, released him from jail. Released Jeremiah from jail. Now, this is in uh, Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 3. So he gets out of jail. What's the first thing that he does? Jeremiah challenges the man that lets him out of jail and says, the Lord doesn't call you, you by name. He calls you terror on every side. Now, there's a surely a good way to get back in jail again. I mean, can, can you imagine? If I get out of jail, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, Phew. I'm going to keep my mouth shut till I get at least outside of the gate. Not Jeremiah. He goes to the leaders and says, hey, God's still mad at you. The temptation to compromise had to have been real. Jeremiah, don't go do that again. Oh, you're just going to get thrown in jail again. They're just going to hit you again. They're going to beat you again. They're going to accuse you of being an ISIS sympathizer again. Are you out of your mind, man? Don't do it. Just, just say no once. Just compromise once. Just, just give in to, this, to this, this, this dark pessimism that's weighing over your head once. And Jeremiah said no. I refuse to compromise my faith. I won't do it. I refuse to compromise. For those that live with a shattered mind, the haunting past, the haunting memories, the haunting temptations of the enemy to give up, to give in, to compromise are never ending. And in our culture, those individuals often live isolated, alone, keep to themselves. They tend not to be very vulnerable, and they suffer in isolation. The cool part, brother and sister, is that even Jeremiah found a way to have victory with a shattered mind. So what did he do? He found hope in praise. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 13 says, Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the, the life of the needy from the hand of evildoers. Jeremiah gets out of jail, tells the leaders, You are terror on every side. He's going back to jail. He's going to get beat again. He's, he's, he's accused of treason. 
And what does he do? He says, I'm going to praise the Lord. You know what happens to children that are always criticized? They believe they're worth being criticized. You tell a children whose child, you praise a child, praise a child, praise a child, they're going to believe that, that they have value. C.S. Lewis says that delight is incomplete until it's expressed. My delight in the Lord is incomplete until it's expressed. What's, what is it that Jeremiah did to help him with his shattered mind? He said, I don't care what it is that's going on around me. I don't care about my past. I don't care what it is that God is not allowing me to do. I make a conscious choice to praise the Almighty King. I thought you'd be more excited about that. See, we, it, just, it just goes to prove that in our minds, we want quicker fixes. Brother and sister, in the world of discipleship, it is much less uh, an opportunity for the magical and mysterious to happen in the moments. It is much more often the journey that shapes us day by day. And that's harder but I promise you that it is the work of God in Christ by the power of his Holy Spirit that shapes us in those moments. So I can choose to praise him. There have been a lot of times in Miriam and I's life when the weight of life has been heavy. We could spend all of our time fretting about the situation or we can declare our faith and trust in Jesus. I've shared it before. That's why Tori's middle name is, is Noel. When the doctors told us she had spina bifida, you need to have an abortion. You know my daughter. She doesn't have spina bifida, but we didn't know. They wanted us to do more tests to get the final word, and we said no. And we decided before she was born that her middle name would be Noel because we wanted her life to be a testimony to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It was around Christmas time when we were dealing with all of this. So we said her middle name will be Noel, a praise to Jesus. Praise does something supernatural to a shattered mind. Jeremiah does something else. He trusts. He finds hope and trust. Verse 12, the very end, says, For to you I have committed my cause. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 12, for to you I've committed my cause. Jeremiah says, I'm going to praise you and I'm going to trust you. I may not understand all of this. I may not understand why I'm the one who has to be thrown in prison. I don't understand why I'm the one who's not allowed to get married. I don't understand why I'm the one who isn't allowed to have children. I don't understand why I'm the one who's accused of treason. I don't understand why I'm the one that's beaten. But I will praise you and I will trust you because you alone are God. It's what he chose to do. Yes, <laughs> he still said, man, it would have really been good if I died before I was born. <laughs> but I will praise the Lord anyway. And I will trust him with my life. In Matthew chapter 8, a man with leprosy, let's throw this into the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 8, a man with leprosy approaches Jesus and says to him, if you will, you can make me clean. If you will, you can make me clean. The man is making a declaration of what it is that Jesus can do with uncertainty about what it is that Jesus will do. He is declaring by faith what Jesus can do. What Jesus can do is known. 
Jesus can heal this man instantly, powerfully, redemptively, restore him to wholeness. Jesus can do that if he wills it. I have found the hardest place to live is the space between what Jesus can do and what he will do. The hardest place to live is the place between what Jesus can do and what he will do. It happens to be the space where the enemy comes in and tells you, you don't deserve it. It's the place where the enemy comes in and says, you haven't been good enough for Jesus to to want to. Your your track record doesn't deserve it. Your your service doesn't deserve it. Your, your, Your whole life, your family's life, nothing about you is worth Jesus doing anything for you. And if we have grown up with a shattered mind, It is easy, easy to believe those lies. It's easy. I'm not making a spiritual statement here. I'm making just a a matter of fact statement. If you've grown up experiencing hardship and difficulty and, and physical and sexual and emotional abuse, if you've been exposed to alcoholism and, and, and drug abuse, if you've been exposed to all of that stuff, it's easy to believe the enemy when he tells you you don't deserve it. It's easy to believe it. My brother and sister, God occupies that same space in between those two places. And the Jesus that lets me in on who God is is the Jesus that's filled with passion for his kids. It's it's the one who ultimately knows whether or not his will will ultimately be beneficial for us. So that if in the daily shaping moving us from where we have been to where we are to where we will be 20, 30 years from now, or an instantaneous break from the pain of our past, Jesus knows which of those two things is going to be most beneficial for us. And when the enemy tells us that Jesus is not working in this moment because we don't deserve it, it breaks the heart of God because he's desperate for you. This Jesus that we see in Scripture is running after his kids, pouring his life into his kids, running after you, trying to advocate for your best. And when the enemy tries to take a shattered mind and break it up even more, the heart of God is the one that breaks. And he wants you to hear very clearly this morning that whether in this moment today he sets you free from your shattered mind or if he chooses by his will to shape you today and tomorrow and 30 years from now he's still shaping, this Jesus is passionate for you and it is his desire to heal your wounded mind, to heal your wounded past. He can make all things new in you today. It is his passion Don't believe the the lies of the enemy that says you're not worth it, you don't deserve it, you're not good enough. Baloney to that garbage. Jesus wants to set us free from our shattered mind. And I believe it with every fiber of my being. Jesus is so desperately in love with you. So desperately in love with you. It's time for the enemy to start getting smacked around in your life and not you. This morning, we're going to end with with an opportunity for you to come forward and pray. 
and praise. And we don't have altars this morning up here because I think it would be beneficial for us to stand as we come forward. That, that, our, that our, our, our lives would be positioned to praise. I don't know what the Lord wants to do, but I know what He can do. And regardless of what He will do, you can trust Him and praise will be a conduit for that trust. Will you stand with me as we pray this morning? Father, we're in this shattered sermon series because as you know, there are a lot of shattered people in the world today. Maybe even this morning, a shattered woman, a shattered man. They've lived there for a long time. They've heard the lies of the enemy. It's time they heard from Jesus. So, Father, will you call us forward to praise you this morning? Help us to begin at the right spot today. This morning, I choose to praise the one who gave his life for me. This morning, Lord, as I praise you, would you reinforce my trust in you? Heal a shattered mind today. Because I believe this morning, Father, you are passionately ready to do it. As we sing, bring a friend. Stand here. If you want to kneel here, you can. Let's worship and praise Jesus today. Father, I thank you that you are the author of the restored mind. You are the one who, when the enemy comes after us and tells us what we're not worth, what we don't deserve, Jesus says, I gave my life for you. Father, that's not just about getting us into heaven. It's about giving us life today. It's about giving us hope today. It's about making all things new today. It is about restoring our mind today. It's about telling the enemy today to take a hike because Jesus loves me. So I choose praise. When the enemy causes, tempts me to engage in self defeating thoughts, I choose praise. When the enemy tells me what I'm not worth, I choose to praise. And Father, may that praise. Strengthen my trust. So that when I don't understand the why, I know the who. And I place my trust in your loving, passion, love-filled arms for me. So may the beauty of your grace go with us and convince us of the truth that is ours in Jesus. 
May we live today with, with something of a renewed mind. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.